Hi everyone, it's Diane with So Batik. I'm really excited about sharing with you two of the six garments that I wanted to have done in May. And I'm wearing both of the garments. The first is the square neck top. And this is made from our Jersey knit. And then second is the pants that I have wanted to make out of our linen for quite some time. And I finally made them. And I have to honestly tell you, um, I love both of these outfits, but they are, I shouldn't say both of these outfits, both of these garments, and I love them together, but it is really difficult to show you the detail on the pant. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of them on a mannequin and then zoom in to each one of the areas of the pant so that you can see it just a little bit better. Um, the blue on the blue with the dark background here in the room is really making it difficult to show you that. So I apologize for that, but we will fix that. And I'll get you some close-ups of the pant. But first, I wanna take you through a little bit about the square neck top. And I believe that I have recorded a pattern review and possibly even how to, how to make the square neck top. Um, because I've made it several times and it's really a wonderful go-to top, simple top for summer or wearing under a jacket, uh, whatever it happens to be that you would like something of this style. And it, the pattern itself, if this is new for you, the pattern itself is written for both a woven fabric and a knit. And it has the layouts for both, taking into consideration the stretch of a knit versus the lack of stretch of a woven. And on our website, you'll see that we have garment kits for both of these substrates, as well as an option for you to select this pattern at a discount if you were to buy any rayon or any of our jersey knit. Um, the one thing that I did and have always done with this particular garment, it is meant to be a crop top. So relatively short in the top. And I probably should have done that with the garment that I'm wearing or the pants that I'm wearing here because the pants are a high waisted pant. And so I probably am a little off proportion here with the outfit that I'm wearing. Um, but it is, one of these garments that I always add length to, even with the length that I added, which was probably about four to five inches, I was able to make this top out of uh, 27 inches of our Jersey knit, so less than a yard. And then I still had a section of the um, 72 inch wide Jersey knit left over. So if I wanted to add it to another project to do some um, piecing work or something that looks a little scrappy, I'm probably going to do that with this fabric and share with you, I don't know where I put my tops that I have made little rectangles out of and um, tumblers out of to make a jersey knit top. So I'll share that with you as well. I save every scrap so that I can do something later with it. Um, but this, again, I am showing you a front, a back. There's a facing for the square neck front and the curved back. That is it. Those are, the, you sew up your shoulders, you add your facing, you sew up your side seams. They're, these are just a little bit of an extension of a curve that comes from your side seam up into this little sleeve portion here, your arm opening. There's no attached sleeve. It's that simple. And I think the thing to always think about when it comes to this particular top or anything that has kind of this square, square neck opening is follow the instructions in this particular pattern before you cut out your pieces or decide on the size that you really want to make. The next version of this I'm going to make uh, smaller because I think I made a large and I think I'm going to I'm gonna to transition to a medium because I feel like there's just a little bit too much ease on this particular Jersey knit that I am 
wearing. And so I want that just to be just a little bit more snug. And then the collar here, the open square, I want to raise up just a little bit too. And the pattern is really great about what you need to do step-by-step step for fitting your neckline. And so it is worth taking a moment to go through the neckline depth, the width, and everything and making it just perfect for yourself. The woven version of this pattern has darts right here as well. That's the only other um, piece that's different between the woven and the jersey knit, okay? But super simple. Um, you can make a bunch of these in a weekend and you will have all of your shirts for your summer season. It is really, really that simple. Now, what I really want to spend a lot of time on is the pant. And I am so glad I finally made this. And I don't know what I was hesitating for because it's really a fast sew. It really is extremely fast. Um, I think for me, um, I learned a lot about pants in general and how to handle um, the rise from the crotch up the front versus the back, how to fit some of that for my body style and my measurements. And I'm gonna take you through a little bit of that and things to think about when you start working on this particular pattern. I made the version here that's in the, with the gold pant and it is view B in this pattern. And it has a very high waist with a tapered leg and it actually is longer than what you see in this particular picture. I This was written for somebody who is 5'6", I'm 5'7", and the ankle, if I left it alone, which I always do on the first, the first version of a pattern that I make, I don't make any changes, just so that I can see how it fits and what we need to do to adjust it. And so the ankle, it really does hit the ankle, and I'm 5'7", and um, it has a, the, the pockets that are inset here and make up part of the outer panel to the front leg. And then there's an inner panel to the front leg that has the crotch seam in it here. And um, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. And then the back is a simple elastic band with a, just one leg, one back leg to it. And then there are facings for the front. And like I mentioned, the back facing that has the elastic casing in it. Um, making these out of linen was the perfect choice because it is so light and airy and feathery and it just feels so great. Um, and it goes really well with the jersey knit top. So I'm really glad that I made these out of the linen and I'm gonna make several more with a few adjustments. But the other, to talk a little bit about the pattern also, is the other pant that's included in this pattern is a wide leg. So view A here is a wider full leg, and I believe it matches the shorts that are view C here. So you have a lot of options out of this pants once you get the right fit for yourself for the main portion of this particular pant. Okay. I started with, I believe it was three yards of our linen. Our linen is 54 inches wide. So when you're planning your garments, plan for 54 inches. The fabric requirements on the back of this particular pattern are for a 45 inch wide fabric or 58. So we are in between those. I tried to kind of match it to the 58 inch because we're closer to that than we are the 45 inch. And I was pretty close to what I needed it to be. The size range for this garment is a zero to a 20, but the measurements, please take this into consideration, I believe for this particular garment. The measurements for the hip of a zero are 33, and for a 20 are 48. The waist, is a 24 for a zero and a 39 for a 48, okay? Now, I really shouldn't pay attention to the waist when there is an elastic band on the back, 
but you still have to because that really is determinant determines the fullness of the elastic in the back and how much it's really going to pull around from the front and I have to tell you that I felt that there was I'm going to stand up here if you can see a little bit but um there is too much elastic fullness for me and so I'm going to change the back panel uh, leg panel on this particular uh, pattern to not have so much fullness and to fit just a little smoother without all of that elastic in the back. And so I do have to change that. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm very open with what my measurements are and how they fit to this pattern. So um, my waist, actually I didn't even consider my waist, my hip is a 45. And so I started thinking that I was going to do the size 16 to 18. And then I got all worried that it was going to be too small. <laughs> and I made it just a little bit bigger, telling myself that I can always reduce the size, which you always can. And so I did make an 18 and I graded it a little bit at the waist to be a little bit wider. And I think that's what ended up with too much fullness in the back of this particular pant, but I wear my shirts lower. And so we're good to go. Um, but do take that into consideration. So I ended up using two and three fourths yards of our 54 inch wide linen. I did have about a quarter yard or more actually left. And, um, and that was after pre-washing and shrinking everything. So the yardage on here for 58 inch wide fabric seems to work really, really well with our linen. So um, I think you'll be, you'll be good to go with that yardage. Okay, now I want to take you through a few things about this pattern, a few things to think about. The, the pattern is very well written. There's a lot of information in this booklet, but take, take a look, as I always say, make sure you're looking at the finished measurements because there isn't really a lot of ease. So I made view B, which is the tapered leg, and there was only an inch and a half of ease around the hip area. And I think that's what got me to think I needed to make a bigger size. Um, so uh, you don't need to do that. There's enough ease because of the elastic. And I think it just, it seems like it runs a little bit larger and I didn't take the time to measure the pattern pieces just to feel comfortable that this ease was correct for me. And I should have done that. Um, so I did find that the pattern pieces were slightly larger than what I um, uh, would have liked. So I'm going to make a 16 next time. And I think that will make a big difference. There is, let's see, the layouts that are in the pattern are very good. I, I actually used them almost identically um, for what I would have done for the pattern. Um, it gives you lots of instructions on how to finish seams, whether you want a French seam or serge your, your edges or use a zigzag stitch if you don't have a serger. And it's just, it's very well written from that perspective. There are a couple of illustrations that I feel were a little misleading in the pictures, but if you read the words a couple of times, you would be able to figure that out. And that was dealing with the back waistband. Let's take a minute right now. I'm gonna take you over to my cutting table and show you the pattern pieces so that you can kind of get an indication of how this garment goes together. And then we'll talk a little bit about some adjusting, um, and I may do that over there as well, of what I'm going to do when I make this for the second time. I'm on my cutting table here, and this is the back of the pant for which we cut two, of course. <laughs> and you'll see on this pattern piece that there are so many notches. Each one is a notch to match up the front to the back leg, the hip area, as well as to know where to turn the fabric for the hem on the ankles. There are notches here at the top where we match our back elastic casing to the back of the pant. 
then I would, I would strongly recommend making a mock-up or a muslin of this particular pants because I really do find that the distance and the rise of these pants is, is very long. And you may need to use the lengthen and shorten line here to make an adjustment for yourself. I have to do that for the next pair of pants because I don't want them quite as long. Okay, so that's the back leg. The front, actually, let me move this over. The front of the leg is made up of a couple of pieces. This is the inside panel of the front. And then we have, let's slide this over. There's two pieces that make up the pocket side. This is the lower portion of that pocket. And then here is the pattern piece for the pocket. It is, I'm gonna slide this out of the way so you can see it. It's very clever because this is our waist up here. Okay, so this is where these are going to, going to match. And there are notches again to match those up. But the pocket itself is simply a fold with all of its markings. You fold that up and this is attached through the various steps that you follow in the pattern, but this is attached to the lower portion of the pants. Very clever. And then these two seams or th these two pieces are sewn together right here down the front, okay? And that's how that makes up the front leg of the pant. And then there is a piece for interfacing that we need to go right across the top of the pocket, gives it a little bit of stability. And then there are facings, very nice length, nice long facings for the front panels. And the center facing is on the fold. So we have these lines here in your facing match to your seam lines going down the front of the front leg of the pants. So everything really lines up beautifully following each one of the notches. Now, I the only recommendation I have from a sizing perspective is that I would adjust and really pay attention to the rise of the crotch of this pants. It really is long and that may be fine um, for you, but for me, I really, I really, I made these following the size the first time without doing any adjustments and it was simply too long, like as in two to three inches longer than I really like it to be for myself. The other thing I wanna share with you in here is for the pattern itself, the instructions are so well, they're very well illustrated. Take you through each one of the steps to making the garment with the facings. And the only thing that tripped me up a little bit was truly knowing that the back waistband itself makes the front and the back line up perfectly. The other thing that I did not do with my linen that I should have done this time, and I don't know why I wasn't thinking about it, is I should have surged the edges of the linen first. Uh, everywhere that we have an exposed edge and a, an exposed seam, um, not necessarily in the facings because those are in, you know, they're encapsulated themselves. So it's kind of a waste of serger thread if you don't need, they're not exposed. Um, but I think adding the surging edge, just a three thread overlock stitch, just to finish it off nicely, really will keep, it's like a stay stitch. It will keep the fabric from moving when or stretching in any way when you're sewing your seams together. And what I did instead is I basted everything to make sure that it fit properly. And then I went back to my serger and used my serger with a four thread overlock to serge my seams complete. And by doing that, I think it shifted a little bit. And so I'm gonna go back, when I make my next pair, 
I will be surging all of the edges ahead of time so that nothing moves or stay stitch them about three eighths of an inch from the edge of the um, of your seam and nothing will move. So I just felt like it was just a little too movie for me. And another fabric like a rayon or a canvas or just a straight cotton, I don't think it would move as much as what the linen did. So that would be the only other thing that I would do to change my steps to making these pants. But otherwise, wonderful, absolutely wonderful, wonderful pattern. I hope that overhead shot of the pattern pieces helped explain the layout of the pants and just some additional information that might be useful for when you make your pants as well. It really, I'm looking forward to making another pair and actually I might use the black, which is the tuxedo uh, linen for my next pair as well. So I think that might show off the stitching just a little bit better or maybe I need to do something a lot lighter. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'm really glad that I made these and they are so comfortable. Boy, I don't know why I stay away from pant patterns uh, so much. And I, I seem to do that and they're just so great to sew. And I learn something every single time that I do sew up one of these um, garments. So this was fun. So give me some comments on um, if whether or not you have made these pants or any questions that you might have, because I can go into a little bit more detail if you do have questions about this specific pattern itself or the uh, square neck top by Fra uh, Friday Pattern Company. Now, I haven't been mentioning this, but this the pant pattern is from Closet Core, which is really, I, I really do love all of their patterns. Okay, now I have two more garments left out of my selection that I wanted to have done and one of them uh, I'm working with um, Kathy is her name and she has been sewing the fringe dress from our rayon and it is beautiful I can't wait to share it with you for next week or the week after, it depends on, because next week I am away from the office for a couple of days. So I'm unsure if there will be a um, Fabric Friday next week or not, but we'll see what's going on. Um, but it is gorgeous. She brought it in yesterday for a fitting and I absolutely love it. And I think you will too. It's really a cute design, but I still have to make, I have not made this other dress, which is the McCall's 8064, which is going to be such a fun and simple, simple pattern to make because I have made this before. Um, so all I need to do is use my big cutting surface to cut out this pattern and sew it up with the serger. And I think it's just going to be so much fun. So I'll finish this one up and share that with you as well. So I hope you are Actually, I was trying to figure out if there were any customer questions that I needed to answer um, on this particular episode. And I, I can't think of anything that comes to mind that has not been addressed before, but just a couple of things. Oh, let me, let me share this with you. Just a couple of things about working with our linen. I, just like any other of our woven fabrics, I do use a, a, a Schmetz top stitch needle and I actually this time around used a size 8 which is a little on the small size but I did use a size 8 on my serger and on my sewing machine and I used our so fine thread that matches the twilight blue and my interfacing with the linen is our NV silk which is that really, really lightweight interfacing and it gave just enough um, body. You could go up in a weight of the interfacing if you wanted your pocket to stand just a little bit higher um, or firmer, but I didn't really see the need for that. Um, and the pocket depth is really very good. Well, I can't see that, can you? Um, it really is very good and it fits, my cell phone fits in it without any issue at all. Um, so it's really a nice depth. At first I thought it wasn't gonna be that deep, um, but it is really, really nice. 
no other tricks to working with the, <laughs> the linen that I think I need to share, except for what I mentioned about finishing the edges um, on the pattern pieces before starting the construction, because I think that really makes a difference in um, making sure that you're not stretching the fabric and you're not moving the fabric in any, in any way. So um, I hope you have wonderful weather where you are and um, enjoy your family, your friends, some time off if you get the weekend off. And, um, and we will see you next week on the next episode of our Fabric Friday. And until then, keep sewing, smiling, and sharing.